Building from plans, that's what we're covering in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. In the last episode, we had glued up the engine mount and the fin panels together, and now that glue has dried. So our next step is to seal the fins. Um, now I like to use the fill and finish or the wood, wood filler from uh, Elmer's. Um, it's a water soluble filler. Um, so you just add water and you can thin it right out. It's made for filling nail holes, but it works great for filling um, the grain on balsa wood fins. So you have to do this um, both sides at the same time because if you only put filler on one side because of the water, it's going to warp the wood. So that is why I have a little stick inside the wood so that I can hold it while I'm painting on the filler and then I got a little piece of foam here. You can also use a cardboard box and that just allows me to set it aside so that the air can get on both sides and let it to dry. Um, so I got a little piece of music wire here and what I do is you got to go with the direction of the grain. You can't go across the grain. It doesn't really want to go in that way. So you just carefully find the middle and then you got to carefully twist it as you're sliding it in. And I put my fingers on both sides so I can feel it if it wants to start coming through. Uh, because if it's going to come through, that's going to ruin the outside finish. See, now there it came through. So I'll just slide it over to a different spot and I'm twisting it as I'm putting it in. And I don't have to go in really deep. I just need it um, deep enough so that it holds the fin on like that. So. I got those ready to go. Um, I'm going to get my wood filler here. Um, I got an empty cup and you're going to need a stir stick. And um, I've added water to this previously. So it's actually pretty good. Um, so I'm not even going to use that cup. Um, the second time I put it on, you might have to do this twice. The second time I want to thin it out even thinner than this. Um, you can see it's kind of drippy, but it, you know most of it's staying on the stick, and that's about the consistency you want. Um, so I'll have a plastic ready. You're going to need a paintbrush. You're also going to need a little bit of water to clean off your paintbrush. The nice thing about this stuff is it's water soluble, so it cleans up really easy. So just get a load on your paintbrush and then just paint it on. You can see I'm putting it on really thick because I want to make sure that I'm covering all of the wood grain. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the other side. And you want to do the other side right away. Um, kind of do it in stages so that equal amount of water is going in both sides of the wood so it's not warping so bad. You can see this is really thick. Um, don't forget the edges. Now the bottom edge that glues to the rocket, I'm not going to do that edge. But I will do all the other edges. Okay. So that's the technique. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other ones and then we'll be right back after they have dried. So uh, to make them dry faster, what you can do is you can stick them out in the hot sunlight or you can stick a fan on them, a room fan, and just kind of get air flowing over it fast as possible. That will dry quicker. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and the fins are dry. Um, if they feel cool to the touch, they're probably not dry yet. That's still the water evaporating. So make sure that they feel like the same temperature as everything else in the room. Um, now we're going to start sanding and I've got a sanding block 
and I got sandpaper and I'm going to start with 150 grit um, and then I'm going to switch to 320 grit. Um, you want to start, now this is really dusty so I recommend using a, a dust mask. Um, so what I do is I start and I hold it in the, on my fingertips and I'm just going to spread the weight evenly and then I'm going to just start sanding across. And you got to be careful. Um, hopefully your wood is nice and flat, but usually it's not. Usually it has a slight curve to it. And you'll notice that um, on the part because you'll notice that you're cutting into getting close to the wood on one part more than the other. So it's usually on the edges more than the center. Um, so to get the center, um, when, I, when all my edges start looking like that, I'm going to start doing the center. And then I'm going to lay it on the table. I'm just going to get some sandpaper and start sanding the center like this. That way I don't cut into the edges too much. I want to leave just the thin film of the powder or the uh, filler on the edges on everything. So it's all going to be a uniform color. If anything looks darker than the other, um, then you need to continue to sand. And I said before, this is a multi-step process. Um, and then the next step is, you know, I'm going to seal it again with the wood filler, but thinner coats. So I'm going to thin it out with water a little bit. Okay, so now if you can see the color difference just a little bit, it's, um, I'm getting into the wood, so I'm starting to see the wood here. But on this side, it's still pretty thick. So I'm going to switch to hand sanding to do that side. And then just flake this off to get it to fall out of your sandpaper. Again, wear a dust mask. I'm starting to get starting to float up into my face and I don't want to really want to breathe it. Okay, so I can see right here I got a little divot, so that's why I want to do it a second time. And now on my table, I'll just take a straight edge and just push all that dust out of the way so I can flip it over so that it's laying on a nice flat part. Okay, so I'm going to continue sanding, but don't forget about the edges. Um, they are important as well. See, I do square edges. Now you can round off your edges and that's perfectly fine. Um, I like square edges just for the one reason that they're easy to photograph. So when you look at them, they look nice and sharp. Uh, but if you want it to fly better, round them off. Um, they'll, they'll fly higher when they're rounded. Okay, so I'm going to continue sanding, um, and then the next step, um, I think we're either going to put in the engine mount or we're going to start attaching the fins, but you'll have to wait for that. So now my name again is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light and may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.